Занимается. Те, кто занимается. Твои. Твои. Тебе. Тебе.
like dangerous. It will be very easy for me, for I am becoming mad to hear about your transcendental qualities and pastimes, which are eternally existent. Гуру Махараджа продолжал, «О беспредельный Господь, прошу Тебя, дай мне возможность общаться с великими преданными, еще трансцендентное любовное служение Тебе ни на мгновение не останавливается, как полноводная река, несущая свои воды к морю. Жизнь таких возвышенных преданных чиста и свободна от скверны. Я знаю, что с помощью преданного служения мне удастся пересечь океан невежества материального бытия, на поверхности которого, как языки пламени, вздымаются волны незгод и опасности». Мне не составит никакого труда пересечь его, ибо я одержим желанием слушать о твоих трансцендентных качествах и деяниях, над которыми не властно время. Purport. The significant point in Dhruva Maharaj's statement is that he wanted the association of pure devotees. В комментарии Шрила Прабхупады самыми важными в этом стихе являются слова Дхрува Махараджи о его стремлении к общению с чистыми преданными. Transcendental devotional service cannot be complete and cannot be relishable without the association of devotees. Без общения с преданными трансцендентное преданное служение не может быть совершенным и не приносит наслаждения. We have therefore established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Именно для того, чтобы предоставить людям возможность такого общения, мы основали Международное общество сознания Кришны. Anyone who is trying to be aloof from this Krishna Consciousness Society and yet engage in Krishna Consciousness is living in a great hallucination for this is not possible. From this statement by Dhruva Maharaj, it is clear that unless one is associated with devotees, his devotional service does not mature, it does not become distinct from material activities. The Lord says, Satam prasangam mamavirya samvido bhavanti hitkarna rasayana. Srimad Bhagavatam 325.25 Господь говорит, что там про Санган Мамавирия, сам видо, Баванти Хитра Карнара Сайна Катха Бхагава, там 3.25.25. Only in the association of pure devotees can the words of Lord Krishna be fully potent and relishable to the heart and ear. Только в общении с чистыми преданными слова Господа Кришна обретают полную силу и начинают услаждать слух и сердце. Дхрува Махарадж explicitly wanted the association of devotees. Дхрува Махараджа не скрывал своего стремления к общению с преданными. That association in devotional activities is just like the waves of an incessantly flowing river. Такое общение в преданном служении подобно волнам полноводной реки, непрерывно несущей свои воды к океану. In our Krishna consciousness society, we have full engagement 24 hours a day. В нашем обществе сознания Кришны мы занимаемся служением Кришне круглые сутки. Every moment of our time is always busily engaged in the service of the Lord. This is called the incessant flow of devotional service. A Mayavadi philosopher may question us. You may be very happy in the association of devotees, but what is your plan for crossing the ocean of material existence? Философ Майвади может спросить нас, очень может быть, что общение с преданным не приносит вам счастья, но как вы собираетесь пересечь океан материального бытия? Дхрува Махараджа's answer is that it is not very difficult. Дхрува Махараджа отвечает, что это совсем не трудно. He clearly says that this ocean can be crossed very easily if one simply becomes mad to hear the glories of the Lord. Он ясно говорит, что тому, кто опьянен нектаром повествования, прославляющий Господа, пересечь этот океан не составляет никакого труда. Бхавад Гуна Ката, for anyone who persistently engages in hearing the topics of the Lord, from Srimad Bhagavatam, excuse me, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitamrita, and one, and who is actually addicted to this process, just as one becomes addicted to intoxicants, it is very easy to cross the nations of material existence. Bhavad 
Гуна, Катха, каждый, кто постоянно слушает Шимад Бхагават Гиту, Шимад Бхагаватам и Читание Чаритамри, то кто не может прожить без них, как пьяница без вина, легко преодолевает невежество материального бытия. The ocean of material nations is compared to a blazing fire. But to a devotee this blazing fire is insignificant because he is completely absorbed in devotional service. Океан материального невежества иногда сравнивается с ним пожаром, но преданный, полностью поглощенный своим служением, не обращает на этот огонь никакого внимания. Although the material world is blazing fire, to a devotee it appears full of pleasure, Vishram Purna Sukhayate. Хотя материальный мир охвачен пожаром, преданным он кажется исполненным блаженства Vishram Purna Sukhayate. The purport of this statement by Dhruva Maharaj is that devotional service in the association of devotees is the cause of the development of further devotional service. By devotional service only is one elevated to the transcendental planet Goloka Vrindavan and there also there is only devotional service for the activities of devotional service both in this world and in the spiritual world are one and the same. The example of a mango can be given here. Shiva Siddhi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Привязанность к слушанию о славе Господа и Его преданных. Пропад, 
said to Mayavadis may ask, oh it is very good that you like the association of devotees, but what is what is your plan to suffer from material miseries because they're always filled with thoughts of my activities and pastimes. Association means hearing from them. Разумеется, привязаться к ним означает и означает привязаться к слушанию, а не привязаться к общению. Just like previously. Баларам Пунима. И об этом всем известно. На самом деле даже в конце лекции на Баларам Пунима нам задали вопрос.
So they try simply by their hard endeavors, by their austerities, by their intelligence to become detached. But simply to become detached is not a very safe place to be. Because as Lord Brahma states, Aruya Kutstrena Parampadam Tata Patantito Nadrita Nyusmadangraya, that one who tries to perform severe austerities and penances, they may become detached, but they're th and they may think themselves liberated. But they fall down. But they fall down from their position of imagined superiority, because they haven't become attached to your lotus feet, Krishna. <coughs> Therefore, they fall from their position because they are not sheltered with genuine spiritual attachments. <coughs> so to be attached is natural. And we should not simply struggle to become detached. Bhakti Yoga Bhagavati, what is that verse in the first canto? Huh? Every, by rendering devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one automatically acquires causeless knowledge and detachment. Vasudeva Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga. That's right. <laughs> so detachment automatically awakens to the degree that we become attached to, the, as, as Dhruva Maharaj is saying right here, becomes attached to the association of devotees. And become attached to the association devotees for what purpose? That he says in the next verse. Satam prasangam mamavirya samvado bivante ritkana rasayana kata. Because in the association of pure devotees, discussions of the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of God, that they become very pleasing to the ear and then they enter into the heart. This is a process that takes place. The transcendental sound vibration enters the ear, and then where does it go once it enters the ear? It enters into the heart, because in the heart is, is always the potential to love Krishna. The pure love for Krishna is eternally situated within the heart of every living being. It doesn't come from any other source. It's already there. Shravanadi Suti Chete Koreye Udoi. When one hears about Krishna from the right source, then what happens is that that love, which is naturally To the heart. And when it goes to the heart, then what happens?
Why endeavor to cross in a very difficult way? Lord Brahma explains that those who try which is filled with the waves of blazing fire-like dangers. It will be very easy for me.
То есть отец сидел прямо там у него на глазах, и друг Махараджа посмотрел на отца, отец, отец никак не возвращался. Tsar Druva as, as, as a good candidate because
somebody who had such determination to have the association of the Lord. <laughs> so then Narada Muni, he changed his methodology. He tried another approach. He said, okay, Jehovah, do you want the association of the Lord? This is what you've got to do. And described him the austerities he had to perform. And he initiated him in the Vaishnava mantra. He told him you chant this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Perform strict austerities in this way that I've described to you. Go to the banks uh, of the river in Madhuvan. In this way, by performing such austerities, you will get the fulfillment of your desire to seek to f see the Supreme Lord. So Dhruva Maharaj then, this, these instructions <laughs> This is what I want. This is what I wanted to hear. I didn't want to hear go back. I want to go forward. I want the Lord. This touches me. Why did he want the Lord? Because he thought the Lord was the best person to approach to get revenge. That's <laughs> what he wanted. <coughs> so as we know, Dhruva Maharaj went to Madhavan, performed strict austerities. He restricted himself from from uh, from eating, he, and gradually he started restricting himself to the eating only f uh, roots and drinking. And then, and dried leaves. Then he stopped eating completely. He started living simply from breath. Then he started controlling his breath. And after controlling his breath, he started taking a breath, what is it, once every nine days or something like that? <laughs> and because of his great austerities that he was performing, he was began to choke the universal airs. <laughs> and the demigods, they went to the Lord and started complaining, what is this five-year-old boy doing to us? He's choking us. <laughs> and then, in due course of time, the Lord appeared before him. And when the Lord appeared before him, Dhruva Maharaj was so overwhelmed by the presence of the Lord. And he understood that the Lord was so kind to appear to him in this way. But he became so much attracted to the Lord that whatever was there was in his heart he was lost interest in. He said, I, I've come here looking for a piece of broken glass and I found the most valuable jewel. And he began composing prayers to the Lord. And within those prayers, the only thing he asked from the Lord was this verse. It's the only thing he asked. He said, all I needed the Lord kindly blessed me. First he glorified the Lord. Then he asked, kindly bless me so that I may associate with devotees. Imagine, getting the darshan of the Lord, what's the only thing you ask the Lord? <laughs> you only need to ask for is give me association with devotees. <laughs> Why? Because in the association of devotees I become mad 
and uh, may I to hear about your glories. Because when I'm hearing about your glories, I'm always associating with you. As a matter of fact, one of the things the Lord told you the Maharaj. He told him several things. One of the things he told Ruva Maharaj is that, okay, when your father gives up the throne, you will become king. And you will rule this world as king for 36,000 years. He didn't tell Juva, okay, you're going back to Godhead. Because Juva, he had a desire. His, one of his desires was he wanted a kingdom better than his father's. He wanted to sit on the throne, but he also wanted a kingdom even better than his father's. Even better than his grandfather, Swayambhuvamanu. Even better than his great grandfather, Lord Brahma. <laughs> he wanted a kingdom that was better than all of them. So then, the Lord, one of the things that he told Dhruva Maharaj is that you will rule your father's kingdom for 36,000 years. You will perform sacrifices and you will be able to remember me. So Dhruva Maharaj was thinking, yes, in order to remember the Lord, I need the association of devotees of the Lord. <laughs> 36,000 years. <laughs> I need association with devotees of the Lord. So he was praying in this way that please give me the association of devotees because by their association I become mad simply to hear about you. So the Lord said, okay, you'll have a kingdom. And then the Lord said that you'll have a kingdom even better than your great-grandfather's, Lord Brahma. At the end of your life, you'll go back to this kingdom that I'm giving you to become the king of. You'll become the king of the pole star the, within this universe which is never even destroyed at the time of universal devastation. It's even better than Lord Brahma's. Lord Brahma's planet is destroyed and even Lord Brahma dies at the end of his lifetime. But you'll, you'll go back and you'll have your own kingdom after you serve as king for 36,000 years. And then he says, and oh by the way, Druva, your stepbrother, Utama, he will go into the forest to hunt. He'll be killed. And your stepmother, and in anguish, she, she'll enter into the forest to look for him. And she'll be devoured by a forest fire. The Lord told this to Druva. So he told three things. He told him that you'll have the kingdom, you'll have the rule of the kingdom, you'll go back to this, you'll have your own planet, your stepmother will be killed, your brother will be killed, you have, you'll sit on your father's throne, you get all the revenge you wanted. <laughs> And then the Lord left. 
And then Juva Maharaj was shocked. He was completely shocked. The Lord left and didn't say anything about the only thing I asked him for. Он ушел, подумал, подумал, он хорошо скрылся, но при этом не сказал ни слова о том, что я единственная вещь, которую я его попросил. The only thing he he spoke to me about was all my previous desires and attachments. Единственное, о чем говорил Господь, это о моих прежних привязанностях и желаниях. But when I asked him, "Oh Lord, please give me the association of your devotees," he didn't mention anything about it. Но когда я попросил Господа, пожалуйста, Господь, даруй мне общение с твоими преданными, то он вообще об этом не обмолвил, не обмолвился. He, and the Charya say that Juvan Maharaj was thinking he was in so much anguish. He was thinking the Lord must think I'm I'm duplicitous. И Ачарья объясняет, что Дуру Махараш так огорчился после этого, потому что подумал, что Господь счел его лицемером. Because I realized when I saw him, the only thing I wanted was association of devotees, but he didn't say anything about that. Я даже знал, когда увидел его, что единственное, чему я хочу стремиться, это к обществу его преданных, но об этом ничего не сказал. So he condemned himself. Он стал себя ругать. Дуру Махараш even said, "I'm just like a I'm like a doctor, a doctor who's treated who's treated a dead patient." And I'm just like a patient of a doctor who's treated a dead patient. <laughs> a dead patient. <laughs> he was lamenting. Of course, it was spiritual lamentation. It was spiritual lamentation. He became very purified by the spiritual lamentation. But the point is, is that just see how much a devotee is attached to the association of devotees who are attached to the Lord. That even in the association of the Lord, the devotees ask to be associated to be with devotees. Because being in the association of devotees who are attached to you makes it so easy to live in this world. It's the easiest path. And that's what Dhruva Maharaj is saying. It's the easiest way to be with you. The easiest way to be with you is to be with you in the association of your devotees. Because your devotees won't let me forget you. Because they're always talking about you. Right? As though Kapila Dev told his mother, seek out the association of devotees who always talk about me. Become attached to hearing from them about me. And if you can't become attached, then at least serve them. First Canto Bhagavatam says, Shushu Sho Shrana Danasya Vasu Deva Kata Ruchi Syan Mayat Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirta Nashevanat. Oh twice born sages. No no excuse me, that's not the verse. Shushu Sho by rendering devotional service uh, to those who are by serving those devotees who are freed from vice, great service is done. By such service, one develops an attraction for hearing and chanting about Krishna. So even if one doesn't have taste, one can still aspire for that taste. By serving devotees who have taste. Just by rendering service to them. Which includes hearing from them. Then what happens? Their message will enter the ear, ear and gradually go to the heart. 
Therefore, Prabhupada says, we have established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness for this purpose. He says, anyone who thinks he can make advancement in spiritual life outside the association of International Society for Krishna Consciousness is living in hallucination. <laughs> He says because devotional service can only mature in the association of devotees. It cannot mature without the association of devotees. But in the association of devotees, it matures. Then Prabhupada describes in the end of his purport how it matures. It gives the example of how the seed of bhakti, Bhamanda Brahmate, Kona Bhagyavan Jiv, Guru Krishna Prasadi Bhai, Bhakti Lata Beach, how the seed of bhakti is planted within the heart. And that the seed of bhakti is planted within the heart, he has to go on watering that seed by hearing. And when that seed continuously is watered, it, would it, devo it grows into a devotional creeper, a devotional plant. It breaks through the coverings of this material universe. That devotional plant then enters into the spiritual world. It takes shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. And then it bears fruit. It bears the fruit of love for Krishna. As, as, as Lord Kapila Dev said, that our devotional plant matures in the association of devotees. And Prabhupada makes the point, he says, when a creeper grows, it becomes very difficult to, to bear a big fruit unless it takes shelter of a tree. By itself it's very weak, but when it takes shelter of a tree, wraps around a tree. Then the creeper has more strength to bear their fruit. It's it the same way our devotional creeper takes shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. By hearing the pastimes of the Lord in the association of devotees. And then one gets the strength. One realizes the fruit of such hearing is to enter into the spiritual world. When Prabhupada says to hear and then purport, he says, devotional service rendered in this world and devotional service rendered in the spiritual world are the same. He compares it to like the unripe mango. Mango is mango. Mango is mango. But when it's unripe, it's not as relishable, it's not as sweet. Everyone knows when the mango becomes ripe, it's very sweet. So devotional service becomes more relishable. But he says that devotional service rendered in this world and a devotional service rendered in the spiritual world, they are in the same. They are the same. What is the devotional service we render in this world? The devotional service we render in this world is to give our ears and to hear the words of the Lord. To use our tongues to speak about the glories of the Lord. To use our bodies in rendering service to the Lord. And in this way, the more we are absorbed and engaged in this devotional service, it, attachments become freed. 
И таким образом, чем больше мы поглощаемся при этом служении Верховному Господу, тем больше мы становимся свободны от материальных привязанностей. It's not a painful process. Это не болезненный процесс. It's an easy process. Это легкий процесс. Другой Махарадж говорит, это легкий способ, легкий путь. Difficult way is to try to become detached. Сложным путем люди идут, которые пытаются сами отойти. It's so hard. Очень сложно. I'm too attached to become detached. Другой Махарадж говорит, I'm not going to take the difficult way. Другой Махарадж говорит, нет, трудным путем мы не пойдем. That's the difficult way. I'm going to be in anxiety every step of the way. I'm too attached. Why should I take the difficult way? I want the easy way. Let me become attached to your devotees. That's the easy way. It's not so hard. It's, it's maybe seem painful. But it's the most painless method. It's the most painless method Самый to become attached to this. Because it's the most natural method. The most natural method is that which increases our attachment to that which is spiritual. This is what Prabhupada came to give us. This is why I love this verse. <laughs> it's such a so clear. Prabhupada has given us the whole science and one purport. <laughs> the whole science of what it means to go back to Godhead. Take the painless path. The easy path. And just develop some attachment for hearing about Krishna. And stay in the association of devotees who help us to increase that attachment. It's the easiest process of mystic power, of mystic yoga. And it's confirmed by Dhruva Maharaj. Confirmed by all of our Acharyas. And that is why the teach us by their example. By speaking the Srimad Bhagavatam and by teaching us this method how to become happy and how to share that happiness with others. Simply by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam Nashta Payeshu Abhateshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevya Bhagavatu Tama Shloki Bhakti Bhavati Nashtaki Right. By, by regularly hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, and by regular attendance of class, <laughs> regular attendance of classes of Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I always make that point that Prabhupada changed that in the verse. <laughs> <laughs> and by serving the devotees of the Lord, all that is troublesome to the heart becomes practically destroyed. And loving devotional service to the transcendental Lord becomes established as an irrevocable fact. Irrevocable. Once going there, one doesn't come back. Once becoming attached, one can't give it up. It becomes an irrevocable fact. No calling, nobody can call us back to the material world. It's nice irrevocable. Means you can't, nobody will call you, can call you back. <laughs> That's what it means, irrevocable. <laughs> no enticement. Because that shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. This is a Srimad Bhagavatam's message. Uh, this is why we should hear Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. In the associate, I said regularly. <laughs> In the association of devotees. Okay, we'll end here. Hi, Krishna.
Some question? My hand. Oh, yeah, I said, Mah I recognize Mah He had a question. Kama Sava Kama Va Moksha Kama Udara Diti Vena Bhakti Yogina Yajita Purusha Param Bhagavatam. You know this verse? Mahendra quote it for me. You know the verse. What's the translation? That's an intelligent person must worship the Lord, whether he's filled with material desires, has no material desires, whether he's desiring liberation. The Lord knows how to act with one who has material desires. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't contaminate, become contaminated by approaching him with your material desires. <laughs> He's always pure. And Prabhupada gives the example in that, in that verse. Just like the sun can purify the most impure place by its ultraviolet rays. In the same way, the Lord, one who approaches the Lord even for the fulfillment of material desires, yeah. the Lord can, can purify that heart. But Prabhupada makes the point very clear. In the purport in Dhruva Maharaj, he said one should be very careful about approaching the Lord for the fulfillment of material desires. He says, because then one, one will, will find himself having to lament, <laughs> just like Juva Maharaj <laughs> did. <laughs> he makes that point a few verses ahead from, the, from here. <laughs> He will fulfill them. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 and 
And stay in Chaitanya Charitamrita. My devotee engages in my devotional service and same time he wants the opera. He knows he's becoming stronger. And he, those
So that's how to know it's entering the heart. How to Maitreya in a
As one cultivates a seed by pouring water to fructify it, the seed of devotional service sown in the heart of the devotee may be cultured by pouring water in the form of hearing and chanting of the holy name and pastimes of the Lord. The creeper of devotional service so nourished gradually grows and the devotee acting as a gardener goes on pouring the water of constant hearing and chanting. The creeper of devotional service gradually grows so high that it passes through the entire material universe. And enters into the spiritual sky growing still higher and higher until it reaches the planet Goloka Vrindavan. The devotee gardener is in touch with the abode of the Lord even from the material plane. By dint of performing devotion to service to the Lord, simply by hearing and chanting, as the creeper takes shelter of another stronger tree, Similarly, the creeper of devotional service nourished by the devotee takes shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. And thus becomes fixed. When the creeper is fixed, then the fruit of the creeper comes into existence. And the gardener who nourished it is able to enjoy the fruit of love. And his life becomes successful. It's, it's actually not the purport I was thinking of. <laughs> the point that is, is that, uh, that uh, the Lord, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains, and Raghavarti he says that the devotees who are absorbed in thoughts of the Lord in this world and who are completely absorbed in meditating on the pastimes of the Lord he explains that in the, spirit, in the spiritual world Krishna manifests two qualities one is that he is all-knowing and the other is that he's bewildered Krishna even becomes bewildered by his own divinity by the power of the love of his devotees because the devotees love for the Lord is so strong that when Krishna reciprocates with their love, Krishna even forgets that he's God. Because their love to associate with him is so strong. As a, as, as a father, a parent, as a friend, as a lover, and Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, he says, it's, it's just like the bee when he enters into a lotus flower. The lotus flower closes at night. And when the lotus flower closes at night, the bee becomes trapped. But even though he's trapped in that lotus flower, he doesn't care. Because there's so much nectar there. <laughs> so Krishna becomes trapped in the hearts of his devotees. He becomes trapped by their unalloyed love. And therefore sometimes he even forgets that he's God. Although he's all-knowing. 
So then Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that someone may say then if Krishna forgets that he's God, but then what's going to happen to all those devotees throughout all the universes who are always meditating on him? Who have unalloyed love for him and who have these feelings of desire meditating and serving the Lord in this way. If you tell them the super soul will take care of that, they'll become very distressed. <laughs> they don't want super soul. They want Krishna. <laughs> So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur specifically explains that even though Krishna may seem bewildered, he never forgets those devotees who are always meditating on the Lord in this way. And they relish their relationship with the Lord even though they may still be within this world. So they are relishing. Such devotees, they are relishing. But for those of us who have not established our connection with Krishna, who are still aspiring to establish our connection with Krishna, we are establishing our connection by hearing about his transcendental pastimes. By hearing his transcendental instructions. And the more we absorb ourselves in hearing these pastimes, we will begin to develop a taste. So, but that taste that we are experiencing in this world becomes even more relishable in the spiritual world. <laughs> and that is the point. Yeah. Of course, even in this world, one who's always absorbed with his body, mind, and words in serving to Krishna, he's already liberated soul in this world. But we have to become so absorbed that we, be, that we can relish in the same way as Krishna's eternal associates relish. So the essence of your question is in the spiritual world it's more relishable. <laughs> Even though it may be relishable in this world. But the devotional service in this world, <laughs> Prabhupada specifically qualified in this purport, <laughs> is to be engaged in unmotivated, uninterrupted devotional service. <laughs> That's what's the same. <laughs> as long as it's mixed with food of desires, <laughs> As long as it's mixed with desire for liberation, then Bukti Mukti Spriha Yavat Pisachi Hiri Vartate, Rupa Goswami says, as long as these desires for Bukti and Mukti within the heart, one can't relish devotional service. There's no relish. It has to be Anya Bilasa to Sunyam Gyana Kamani Navita. Then one can begin to relish. So there is some relishment for those who Anya Bilasa to Sunyam. For us, there may be some, some spurti, <laughs> some slight experience a little a little experience of yes there's something higher just to keep us going yeah I want that so we'll turn away from that and say yeah I want that <laughs> so sometimes Krishna gives us a little 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 glimpse of what what relishing could be 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.